You understand? It was reported since me, which means that the Ministry of Social Protection had some kind of knowledge about this 11 year old being pregnant, but like the rest of cases, they thought that they was just um, she was just gonna give birth and it was just gonna be another case of another 11 year old, another 12 year old giving birth and they were gonna cover it up and everything was gonna be okay and she was gonna get back. I, for the life of me, I can't understand how Ministry of Army, well, the Ministry of Army of Fear waste, waste. Um, she drinks and gambles all the time. She is not really concerned with the with the fears or the concerns or the issue of the Amerindian community. That we that that much we have established over the last two over the last three or four years about the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs. So even talking or getting true to her is a waste of time. She is not interested. She is not bothered. She is not burdened, or she don't care about what's happening in those Amerindian communities. But welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. I say I want to make I wanted to make the public aware because make no mistake about this. The Ministry of Social Protection, the Ministry of Armenian Affairs, they are very much aware of what's happening in those Armenian villages. They they are aware of us what's, what's been happening for years in those Armenian villages. They just don't care and they choose not to do anything or they, I, I shouldn't say they choose not to do anything about it. They choose not to do anything that is effective and that, about it. So I was reading some of the comments and some of the things I see are things like, oh, that's their culture. So y'all are honestly proud to come on social media and to make comments like a child giving birth, a, a child, children giving birth. Oh, that's their culture. I saw one person um, made a comment saying that she know of 12 year old that are giving birth to their second child. And we don't ever see this in the news. We don't ever see um, the Ministry of Social Protection talking about this. We don't ever see Ministry of Amnesty Affairs talking about this. These are cases and these are things that are usually hush hush and covered down. Now I saw people, I um, I saw it made the news. I saw it was reported and then I saw somebody said, oh, um, the Ministry of Social Protection can't, can't investigate what they don't know. And I see it says an investigation was launched. Listen, the Amerindian delegation knew this child was pregnant since May. It was reported since May. This child was sent to town since May by family members. You understand? It was reported since May, which means that the Ministry of Social Protection had some kind of knowledge about this 11-year-old being pregnant, but like the rest of cases they thought that they was just um she was just gonna give birth and it was just gonna be another case of another 11 year another 12 year old giving birth and they were gonna cover it up and everything was gonna be okay and she was gonna get back i for the life of me i can't understand how we as women we as mothers could say things like children giving birth to children it's okay it's their culture oh that's their culture so that's presumably their culture so it's okay for children to give it's okay for 11 and 12 year old and 13 year old to give birth to children because that's their culture no i don't think that's their culture i think this government have no care no respect um for the Armenian community, um, for the indigenous people of Guyana, for the indigenous children of Guyana, for our first children, for our first children of the land, which is which are the Amerindians. Because if they honestly care about what was happening to these children in these regions, in these interior regions, then they would have put 
methods in place they would have put system in place and they would have something that has been working that is effective that we don't see this every year repeating itself 11 12 13 year old getting pregnant by most likely or in most cases is a family member or uncle uncle to go out and they drink from the common they get drunk and they you know they have sex with a, they rape their, their, their own children and, and their own you know their own sister their own like and their own brothers and these things because this is not just happening to little girls in the interior this is happening to little boys as well when when is enough enough when are we going to say, when are we as a society, as a nation, when is civil society going to say that children giving birth to children is not okay? I read that message last. I read that message last night. And my heart dropped. Because I could just imagine an 11-year-old giving birth via C-section. So the Ministry of Social Protection can say, oh, they're not aware of what's happening in those interior. They are very much aware of what is happening. They are aware of what is happening. And we see every budget and every year, billions and billions of dollars are allotted to the Ministry of Social Protection for um, whatever, for all these programs and all these things that they, they put forward that they want to, that they want to have going on and all of that. But Ministry of Army, well, the Ministry of Army of Fear, Weiss, Weiss, um, she drinks and gambles all the time. She is not really concerned with the with the affairs or the concerns or the issue of the Armenian community. That we that that much we have established over the last two over the last three or four years about the Ministry of Armenian Affairs. So even talking or getting true to her is a waste of time. She is not interested. She is not bothered. She is not burdened, or she don't care about what's happening in those Armenian communities. But. Um, this is the reality this is the reality of what is happening and for those of you i see some of some, some of you like to comment and say oh why nobody never reported to this or why they don't call social protection i know personally of cases where people i personally have have told them call social protection hotline report this report this matter get back to me let me know what happened i know people that have been calling social protection for the last year for months is that they don't answer the phone they say, okay, we're going to look into it, and that's it. They don't look into anything. The only time they look into something is if another 12-year-old get pregnant or another 13-year-old get pregnant, and then it reaches, so and it reaches social media via my social media page. That's the only time they investigate anything. That's the only time they look into anything. And um, they have cases that are currently reported. That, that, because speaking to someone from the Armenian delegation, they have cases that are currently reported. They got two from Anai, the two, um, they got another two cases in Karasabai, they have another case with a weird teacher impregnate the Armenian girl. Now the parents are the parents is left to look not just the girl, but they have to look at the at the at their grandchild the grandchild as well. And the teacher is still at the school, he's still teaching, he's still there, probably in another relationship with another with another little with another little girl that he's teaching. When are we going to say that these situations, these issues that have been plaguing the Armenian communities for years, year go year come, is the same thing. When are we going to say enough is enough? When is the government going to put an effective method or system in place to curb this kind of behavior? I am tired of seeing children, especially from the Armenian communities, giving birth. Why would you know, and you know, and y'all realize that it's only it, most of the times are just like our first children, the Armenian children from the Armenian community. These things are happening to that is that are being raped and taken advantage of. Child protection was even contacted. Rights of the child was even contacted, and rights of the child was like, oh, when you get more information, contact contact us back again. So. It, now that this thing is out on social media and everybody oh investigation has been launched what investigation when y'all knew this child was pregnant since may when y'all knew this child was sexually assaulted months ago so y'all don't come on social media y'all don't come on this internet and try to tell people like oh like y'all now find out and y'all launching and investigating the government is aware ministry of social protection is aware ministry of Armenian affairs are aware of the the disgusting and the nasty Things that have been happening to our Armenian children for years, and they continue to not do anything, anything 
to help these indigenous children. It's a one recurring cycle all the time. It's a recurring cycle all the time. Recurring cycle all the time. Come election time, they go into the villages. Um, they give them cash grants and they give them some food hampers and they forget about all the problems that 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 facing them and they encourage them and they trick them to vote for them again and then they vote for them they get back into power and then they do nothing to help those Armenian those Armenian children those Armenian several postage stamps bearing Guyana's name and featuring US politicians have been flagged by the Guyana Post Office Corporation as fake and illegal in a statement the GPOC said the counterfeit postage stamps are currently being circulated globally and were produced and issued without the approval or knowledge of the Guyanese authorities the Guyana Post Office Corporation reminded that it is the official body responsible for issuing postage stamps in Guyana and any stamp not officially released by the corporation is considered unauthorized and should not be advertised or marketed for sale or otherwise by or on behalf of GPOC, Guyana or the government of Guyana. The GPOC is advising stamp collectors and the general public to exercise caution and verify the authenticity of any stamps before use. Additionally, persons are being encouraged to contact the Guyana Post Office Corporation immediately if they come across any suspicious stamps claiming to be from Guyana. The matter is being investigated to safeguard the integrity of Guyana's postal services. A 54-year-old man, identified as Kane Shortiwiri, was on Monday injured in a drive-by shooting involving Chinese nationals at the intersection of Lauzer Row and Hatfield Street, Georgetown. According to police, the incident occurred around 1.30 HRS. At that time, Tiwari was lying on a parapet when he observed three Chinese nationals in a black wagon. As the car passed by, one of the occupants fired a gunshot, hitting Tiwari in his right thigh. The suspects then fled the scene, making good their escape. Tiwari was transported to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, where he is currently in stable condition. Police are currently reviewing CCTV footage from the area as part of their ongoing investigation. At least two staff members of the Guyana Marketing Corporation are under investigation after senior management uncovered a massive fraud at the entity which falls under the Ministry of Agriculture. The racket, among other things, involved the smuggling of chicken and eggs and general manager of the GMC. Keshala Lal in a statement said contrary to a press release issued by the Ministry of Agriculture under the guidance of the Minister of Agriculture, Zulfikar Mustafa, the initiation of the audit and investigation was led by her. The internal audit was commenced by Ms. Law and her team. After repeated requests for documentation and reports yielded no results, the general manager said. Consequently, she requested an external audit through the Minister of Agriculture's office. All relevant issues and concerns have been previously discussed with the Minister of Agriculture, Ms. Law detailed in her statement. She said, the Guyana Marketing Corporation has proactively addressed the concerns of financial irregularities by starting with an internal audit an investigation. On duty when a woman arrived at the Jong Hong supermarket, which is located on Sherry Street and wanted to enter with her bags. He said he told the customer about the supermarket's policy as it relates to bags not allowed in the supermarket. According to the young man, minutes after speaking to the woman, two men on a motorcycle arrived. All customers come in the store once they have a bag, they have a bag B and, and also a shelf to leave your bag. A customer came in from the supermarket over there, a female. She had a purse and a black plastic bag. Chinese rules is that no black plastic bag is to come in the supermarket. So I end up stop her, tell her not, that the black bag can't come in the supermarket. She was like, Rasta man, this is food. If me hair is good, I said, man, babe, I see security for the supermarket. These are people rules. I end up a lot Chinese. Chinese say, low shit, because she says it's food. Within 10 to 15 minutes after, the suit man come back riding up on a boy on a bicycle on a motorcycle. He and a, another one from the medical center by Campbell School. And he come, he said, well, he come without your seat. He ain't said nothing. He just walk up to me and start sucker punching me about three times to me. I you understand. I think he come for inquire about fun or something from the Chinese. He just come and start sucker punching me to me. I and this is the damages that. Right now I traumatized buddy because at the end of the day I was trying to earn a living for myself. You know, I could do like any other youth and come out on the road and, and do their badness, but that is not for me. I try in a different route in my life. And I try this walking thing. And over a month and change I try this walking thing. And I walk in with these man, but 
But uh, I, I, I see as a security, you putting your life at risk of people, but the guy is an unarmed guy. And I just barely get a, I just, uh, just tell she that she can't go in with a plastic bag. And this is the result to them. I ain't touch she, I ain't assault she, nothing, you know. What is super bet is right over there, because I saw when she emerged, because at the end of the day, my position is outside of the store. The entire ordeal was caught on surveillance camera. The young man is seeking justice and he believes that the police who are investigating the matter are dragging their feet. So far they're saying that my medical is incomplete. Well, I'm going back to the hospital, they're saying they can't charge nobody if my medical is incomplete. Today is almost a week, you understand? And I know the rules of the hospital is that some the med your medical is supposed to be fit. If I got a referral for surgery, I think therefore my medical is completed. You understand? God they won't give me this. And then telling me that, well, my medical incomplete. But when you go to the police, the police saying the medical incomplete and they can't arrest the man unless they get the medical. And I frustrated that. Look at the condition of me and nobody else. Me. I got to work hard for me. Crutchlow had another doctor's appointment this morning. He said the men are known to him and he's hoping he gets justice in them. The Biden administration said today it was imposing sanctions on 16 allies of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro in response to widespread voter fraud in the country's election and his government's ensuing crackdown on the political opposition. The move came just days after Edmundo Gonzalez, recognized by the U.S. and other countries as winner of the July 28 presidential election, fled to Spain after Maduro's government issued a warrant for the opposition leader's arrest. Among those targeted for sanctions were Supreme Court President Carice Rodriguez, Electoral Council Director Rosal Begill, and National Assembly Vice President Pedro Infante. The list includes others linked to the election as well as military and intelligence officials alleged to have led a campaign of post-election repression. As part of the first punitive U.S. measures in response to Maduro's disputed re-election claim, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington was also imposing visa restrictions on an unspecified number of Maduro-aligned officials. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. Paku. Anybody ever catch a Paku in their life? Anybody ever catch a Paku? You know I like good Paku? Let's come to you and then let's cry. Oh my God. Ah, 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 ah. You don't get sense today. Doggy versus Mr. Rolex man. He's gonna trench today, okay? So, at 11. We call those house slaves and slave catchers. And Kwame McCoy is the epitome of a slave catcher and a house slave. Yes, we must call them out for who they are. 